And it is time for our history lesson. Michael Inhotep, president and founder of the AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. Welcome to your voice. How you doing there, sir? Hey, Angelo. Thanks for having me back on. How you doing, brother? I'm doing fine. So what, what are we going to learn today? What's the lesson? Well, you know, today, brother, uh, we're going to deal with um, economic empowerment and the link between economic empowerment the prison industrial complex and hip hop, especially commercialized. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah, okay. absolutely, absolutely. So this is going to be fantastic. People, get your pens and pads ready to take copious notes. I'm going to drop some information on you here. Let's start out with this um, uh, clip of Dr. Claude Anderson from the documentary, documentary Hidden Colors Two. He's talking about uh, if you have no businesses, you have no power. Wow. Take a listen to this. There's a direct relationship between having the businesses and being in prison. Go find an Asian, see how many Asians you can find in American prisoners. You ain't gonna be in there. But 51% of your prisoners will be black because you don't, blacks don't have any businesses and industries. There's a direct link. Blacks won't practice group economics. Black won't practice group politics. If you don't practice, you're setting yourself up. I told that five-story building, you're setting yourself to get wiped out. Understand the nature of race, which is economics. If you, if you build the first floor, it's economic. Build your businesses and your industries. Control business and industry, and put that pools in your money, and hold that money, and, as a, and practice group economics <clears throat> with it. Arab and Asian money bounces <clears throat> 12 to 13 times what it leaves. Jewish money bounces 18 times. Black folk gotta learn how to practice group economics. Black Americans spend every penny they get outside their own community. Then you take the money and the wealth that you get from that first floor and go to the second floor. The second floor is politics. You then take that money on the first floor and you control your politics. Black folk must quit allowing people to tell them to go out and vote. Vote for what? Nobody's gonna do anything for black folk in politics. Politics is controlled by money, major corporations who got the money. That's what controls politics. If you have no money, you have no say so, you have no benefits coming. So you take your money and you control and you take your money from the first floor, you buy every politician on the second floor. And any politician you can't buy, you rent or lease them to get what you need. Then once you get the second floor under control with the politician, with your money, then you go to the third floor. The third floor then is the police department and the court system. You take your money from the first floor and your politics on the second floor and you control the court system and the police departments. Then the fourth floor, you t is, the fourth floor then is media. You then take the money that you generate off the first floor from business and industries <clears throat> and you go after radio stations, TV stations, newspapers, and cable systems so that you can now inform and communicate with your own people. Right now, <clears throat> black folk only control less than 35 thousandths of 1% of the media in the United States. Out of 12,000 radio stations, black folk own about something like about 75, 80. That's all. You own no cable systems. You don't have a daily newspaper. You have nothing of importance. You don't, you got about one black TV station. And you, so you can't communicate with your people, you can't inform your people. You can't do anything. You can have Rush Limbaugh and all the rest of the guys talking about racism all day long and bad-mouthing you. And old Riley's, they can talk, call black folk all kind of names all day long. What are you going to do? You can't respond. You can't even communicate with your own people because you, you don't have an economic base. 51% of all the prisoners in the United States are black people. You know, you, know, you only make up 12% of the population. That's no accident. It's because you don't control the economics and the politics. And they're going to go after the weakest people they can get their hands on to incarcerate them. That's the black folk. And what are you going to do in response to them when they, when they, when they over incarcerate you? You're going to go out and have a march, a demonstration. We're going to march. March for what? Who cares? Wow. Wow. March that's pretty, pretty powerful, man. <laughs> pretty powerful, powerful stuff there. <laughs> Brother Mike and Hope Tap, president of the African History Network.com. That's interesting, that money, that you use your money to leverage power. Absolutely. And which makes is, a lot of sense. This is what so, every right, ethnic right, group right. does so in you America. Use your money and then you buy a politician. <laughs> Absolutely. You have to buy you buy a politician. If you, you can't buy them, you rent them. Right, you rent them. Then you go to uh, court systems. Absolutely. Wow. And that's you use heavy. your you, that's you, heavy, you, you, you that's aggregate heavy. your you aggregate your dollars. You circulate them in your that's home heavy. community. This is what every ethnic group in America does. Now he talked about in the beginning, it was cut off a little bit. He said there's a direct correlation between group economics and the prison industrial complex. Now, when we look at, uh, he's talking about business ownership, one out of 10 Asians are business owners. He said, how many Asians did you see in prison? One out of 10 Asians are business owners. This is one of the reasons why uh, you don't have a high Asian population in prison. Also, 49% uh, of Asian Americans have at least a bachelor's degree compared to uh, about 28% of the overall U.S. population and 20% of African Americans. 
one out of 34 whites are business owners, European Americans, about one out of 54 Hispanics are business owners, but one out of 104 African Americans are business owners. So what's happening, we've talked about this some previous times in this show, is that we are not creating enough employment opportunities for ourselves. Now the new unemployment rates just came out, okay? okay. Uh, News1.com, which uh, is uh, uh, also owned by the parent company that owns right. Radio One. Right. Okay, excellent source. People visit news1.com. Okay, shameless plug. But new the, the uh, new um, unemployment rates just came out, and they talked about the unemployment rate overall dropped uh, down to uh, seven point four percent, lowest it's been in um, four years. Okay, uh, but the African American unemployment rate is still at about thirteen percent. Even though it's the lowest it's been in uh, about four years, it's still at, uh, I'm sorry, tw it's down to 12.6%. Uh, 12 the unemployment rates just came out, news1.com reported August 6th, okay? And um, what, we have to, what we have to understand is that when we look at the unemployment rates from uh, May, okay, th that came out in May, they were for April, May 3rd, uh, news1.com in the article entitled, Unemployment Falls to 7.5%. Black unemployment rem remains at 13.2%. Okay, this was for April. They talked about how the Asian unemployment rate was 5.1%. Okay. Lower than the overall uh, U.S. rate. Right. 5.1%. This goes back to business ownership. One out of 10 Asians are business owners. So this is something that's very important for us to understand. Now, when we link this to uh, understand uh, hip-hop, there are two important articles that just came out re recently. One was from yourblackworld.com. And it was uh, talking about uh, DMC from Run DMC, okay, okay. Uh, Daryl uh, McDaniels. And he talks about how uh, much of commercialized hip hop operates based upon, based upon a formula, uh, a popular formula to mass market the glorification of violence, guns, misogyny of women, drug culture, prison culture, and excessive materialism. Now, people can check out this article uh, entitled Former Member of Run DMC says hip hop has has been destroyed by corporate America. Okay. And this is from yourblackworld.com. So and he goes on to talk about, you know, Lil Wayne and Jay Z, some things like this. But when we look when we look at this and we look at how a lot of elements in commercialized hip hop. Not all hip hop is bad, I have to say that. I listen to some hip hop you have positive hip hop artists like Wise Intelligent from the Poor Righteous Teachers, Arrested Development is still doing their thing, the X Clan is still out there. You do have positive hip hop. But a lot of commercialized hip hop like your Lil Wayne's, uh your, your Nicki Minaj's, your Rick Ross's things. How like about Willie Khalifa? Uh, 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 Wiz Khalifa? Yeah. All of them man. <laughs> all all the nonsense. They're promoting a lot of negativity to our children, consumption of drugs, alcohols, things like this. Now Rick Ross just recently got in trouble with uh his song You Don't Even Know when he was talking about slipping Molly into a woman's drink and taking advantage of it. Wow. Okay, and, and Molly is an illegal drug and is um, it's a, it's a uh, form of ec ecstasy. Okay, it's like a crystallized form of ecstasy. So now, recently, T.I., who is one of the biggest uh, hip hop artists uh, there is right now, T.I. Uh, talked about in, a, in an interview with uh, XL Magazine, and it was picked up by RollingOut.com. Name of this article T.I. claims Atlantic Records hates his mature, family-oriented image. Now, we know T.I. has had his run-ins with the law, and he used to be uh, a drug dealer uh, back in the day in Atlanta, but he's matured. He has um, a hit um, reality show on VH1, okay, the family hustle with his wife, uh, Tiny, who's a former member of Escape back in the 90s, and he, he's, he's showing a, 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 a lot of maturity. He's... Um, Showing a more adult uh, image of himself, he was just on the View okay. uh, earlier this week. Okay, right, okay? Right, right. He had on a suit, looking very, very professional. In the new, in the new video by uh, uh, Robin Thicke, Blur Lines, which you play on your show. Okay, right, exactly, exactly. <laughs> he's, he's in that video. He's in that okay, video also okay. in a suit. So he's changing his image, but he said Atlantic Records, uh, which is his record company, he said they didn't like the image and they thought it was going to hurt his record sales. Okay, and he's saying, look, I'm I'm more mature now. I'm older. I'm calmer, you know, even though I still talk about uh, hustling some things like that, you know, I'm not glamorizing it. I'm looking at it retrospectively. Okay. Now, you talked about a couple, was well, a couple of Fridays ago, you talked about Don Lemon. Right. I think it was exactly. last Friday. Yes, I, yes, I, exactly. And I called in. Exactly. And I said, Don Lemon didn't want to put things in a historical perspective. Right. Okay. Right. And he talked about African-American men wearing their pants, sagging, things right, like this. Right, and he did right. say that it comes from prison culture, but he didn't want to talk about the corporate conglomerates that market prison culture to our youth through hip-hop. Okay, now, 
T.I. is on Atlanta Records. Atlanta Records was formed, the Atlanta Record Group was formed in 2004 by a merger of Atlanta Records and Electra Records, okay? Uh, and they were owned, they're owned by the uh, Warner Music Group, okay? okay? Uh, the Warner Music Group was owned by Time Warner up until 2004. Time Warner owns CNN, which is the network that Don Lemon is on. Wow. Okay, so it, it's very, so he doesn't want to deal with what's really behind pushing this type of information, this type of nonsense to our youth because they pay his paycheck. That's the network he's on, Time Warner. Right. See, if we really get deep into this, we'll see corporate America behind this because what people have to understand is that the, the artists don't decide which songs get put onto a CD, which songs get taken off of a CD. Those are the suits. That's, they, they, don't, they don't determine um, what type of language is used, things like this. That comes from higher ups. They determine that. They can shut, they can shut corporate America can shut this down tomorrow. But unfortunately, what happens is you have corporate conglomerates that also have interest in privatized prisons. Okay, so they're fueling this. Um, so people can check out that article. Now, when we okay, we're gonna, we have to take a break. Okay, go ahead. No we'll take a break. We come back and we also have callers uh, Marcy, uh, William, and Shay. We'll be back, you all, right after this. Oh, too many. The silver fire that oh. is blaze racing through Southern California's inland mountains has forced at least 1,500 evacuations. <laughs> it deals with Unicorn, man. It deals with how these prisons the are manufacturing products out of control. and Spreading putting small businesses out of business. The intense inferno wow. devours and using, using prison labor. Well, we got about 30 minutes when we come back. Do you want to come back to another video clip or are you straight? I only have one video Oh, okay. I can put all these other clips. Oh, those were articles. I was just showing you some articles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, 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 so. yeah, somebody wanted to respond to the video, too. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. Listen hey, if you can everybody. let our callers know, we'll be with them right after the break. If you can let our callers know, we'll be with them right after the break. Don't even right? try to change that channel. I'm, I'm on all of them. So, you already know Snapshot rewards our customers for their good driving. Well, now anyone can test drive Snapshot for free, even if you have insurance with another company. See how much you could save before you switch your insurance. Lil Wayne. When Lil Wayne gets in trouble, he has attorneys to take care of all this <laughs> and to minimize... Wait, did you just T.I.? T.I. man was, 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 com slash he was convicted of Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and affiliate Snapshot not available in all states. Thousands of dollars worth of weapons. Right. He did about goals. a year in prison. Right, right, right. You if that happened to one of our children, they'll be in prison until the lines win the Super Bowl back to back. You can score great prizes, like a Jansport backpack, movie tickets, even a Keurig mini coffee brewer. Plus, you get a $5 off 50 coupon to use at Staples. Love it! Shop for your chance to win at Kohl's Savings 101 sale, starting Friday. Kohl's. Expect great things. No Reckless Corporation of America, man, back in April, they announced that they were paying their things. shareholders $675 million in dividends. What? They are the largest operator of privatized prisons in the country. They operate about 67 privatized prisons. Well, we definitely know that there's, there's um, profit to be made in that whole prison well, system. Well, not only profit, man, they, they constructed the laws, Alec. Corrections Corporation of America and Wacker Hut have pushed for harsher sentences to give people on 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 nonviolent crimes harsher sentences on minimum possession of marijuana to give you longer sentences in, in prison so that they can then profit from your labor. Wow. Well, I was thinking that you're going to see probably more prisons also start um, businesses. You know, they had a little license place stuff. We're we'll do, doing more manufacturing. Oh, I'm going to deal with that. That's what, yeah, that's what we're about to talk about. More oh, they're stuff. doing that. There are, right. there are almost 100 different industries that prison, that oh, yeah, federal prisons make products for. And then they market these, they sell them to corporations and, and, and they sell them, they sell them to corporations and corporations sell these around the world. Right. Oh, absolutely, man. People don't understand how deep this thing is. And they're coming after our youth. This is why you have the prison, this is why you have the uh, school to prison pipeline. So a lot of our schools look like prisons. Right. They have armed guards, right, metal that's detectors, true. That's true, bars, right. all types of things like this. Right. Yeah. That's, that's, that's significant, man, because it changes the whole mindset. Absolutely. You know, it makes that more like your norm. You know, it's just like. It, yeah, it, it makes it like acceptable school. to you. Right. It makes it acceptable to you. Right, right, right. That's true. So we have, we have to understand this conditioning process, and this is why. Economic empowerment for us and supporting our own businesses and growing those businesses is so important because these are the businesses most likely to hire our own children so that they don't have to turn to criminality. Right. right. And my guest is Michael A. Hoptap, president of the African History Network.com. The African History Network.com. 313 298 1200 is the number. We have a number of callers. Uh, Marcy, welcome to your voice. How are you doing, Marcy? Hey, 